So this video is about the checkout assignment. One thing I want to mention real quick is that this is very much an overly simplified system. So a simulation is an attempt to take a very complex system and simplify it down to the absolute necessary things. Now, it may be that in our example here, we have overly simplified it. And if that's the case, make sure in the essay portion of your program, you mention the things that are overly simplified. And to begin with, let me talk about the data structure involved in this. So we've looked at a stack with the infix translator, and what we're going to use this time is something called a queue. They are very similar data structures. So the basic idea is that where we had push with a stack and we put something in top, we have something called an queue with a queue, which basically puts it in at the beginning of the pipeline. So if we continue on with this example, notice that that's how they go in the same way. So you can think of it as an array where you put them in sequentially. You can think of it as a linked list where you just always add to the end or at the beginning, whichever way you want to do it. So once again, you can implement it however you want. But on the other side of it, when you are pulling things out, pop always pulls from the top of the stack, whereas dq pulls from the other end of kind of the pipeline, if you think of it that way. So when we pull out one thing out of the stack, we pull the six back out, whereas the two, the original thing that we started with, comes out of a queue. So notice the only th difference is that the order of these things has switched. So queue, things come in in the order that you put them in, whereas a stack, it goes the other direction. What, what these usually are abbreviated as is first in, last out, sometimes see philo versus fifo. If you put things in in order, when you pop them back out again, this two, which was written at the beginning, is the last one out. Whereas in a queue, you have first in, first out, where the two goes in and is the first one to come out again. So let's take a look at a variation of this called a priority queue. So the idea is that these are the actual numbers I'm going to put in, and these are priorities. Once again, you put them in in queuing things. But if I have, in this case, a minimum priority queue. So the one goes to the front. It actually pushes the 10 out of the way because one actually has a lower priority. So it actually gets sorted in order. Every time you put one in, you sort it by priority. However, things that have the same priority just go in order. So the seven with two priority goes in, bumps the 10. The eight comes in. It gets sorted, but it's still put after the five. The five and eight were done in order, but the priorities have changed. If I put the four in, the four bumps the 10 again. And then when we pull them back out again, this is the order they come out in. We're going to be using a priority queue for a checkout simulation. The way this works is we're going to have a queue of times that is a priority queue. And it is sorted based on the time. So if we look at this, the way I have these events organized is this is customer one. Event one is them first coming into the store. And this is the time when that occurs. Customer two, event one, one minute is the time that, that comes in, and so on. So this is a time priority queue. Over here, we have two checkout stations. So think of a store checkout. These are regular queues. These are not priority queues. So to begin with, we put all of our events in. I'm going to walk through this example and only show you four events, but hopefully it will give you the idea for the rest. So to begin with, we pull out our first event, the minimum time, which is this guy. What we're going to do is he's then going to be in the store for a certain amount of time, which is our second event. So it's still customer one, second event, and we update the time for what's going on. So he gets put back in. Notice he goes back to the end because of time. Customer two has this, a time in the store that's much shorter. So when he goes back into the queue, notice that he ended up here when he got sorted. So even though they're at different levels of events, everything is base, sorted based on time. And the basic idea is that when you pull out the next guy, you alter their time and deal with that event, and then possibly put it back in the time queue. We pull out this guy. He also has a secondary event. He goes back in. This poor guy is still at the end of the line. This guy comes out. He's a second event. He has uh, been in the store for this amount of time, so now he's going to go and check out. That's what this third event is going to be. So he's going to find a shortest line, so this one here, for example. And then notice that we actually put him back in the time queue again so we can get him back out again. 
This guy hasn't even gone to the second event yet. So he goes in. We pull out this guy, and he's done. So he actually checks out before anybody else gets into line. So now that we have these guys, let's take a look at multiple queues. So this guy goes into the first checkout. This guy goes into the second checkout, because that's the shortest line. Now this guy, he's got to make a decision about where he's going to go. Both of these have one person. I, I'm just going to, in my simulation, put him up here behind the first guy. This guy is the first one. This guy is the second one. And they get put back in here. Now, you have an option at this point. One way that you can update people's checkout times is you actually calculate how long this guy's going to take and add this guy's checkout time plus everyone in front of him. Another option is when you pull this guy out of the queue, you update everybody else in line behind them and add that checkout time onto them. So there's a couple different ways you can deal with waiting in line for checking out. In this case, this guy comes out, he clears out the queue, and he's done. Notice that when they're done with checkout, they don't go back into the time event queue. So eventually, you're going to run out of things in the time queue. And when that's done, that's when your simulation is done. Hopefully, that will get you through this project.